Hi, I know that you're all looking forward to the next update in the ongoing and very exciting saga with Mitchell from Australia, that flat earther from down under who I paid to do a job hey, for me. Hey, Mr. Sensible, you have an email. Have I? So I have. I've just had an email from Mitch and he's gone and started making legal threats. I think it's about time we brought out the big guns. Meet General Anthony Clement McAuliffe. Now you can enjoy this entire saga by watching this playlist. I hired a flat earther, but just for now, let's have a very, very quick rundown. Mitchell produced a video of a folk old pendulum in a kiddies science museum that he said proved the earth was not rotating. His video was highly cut. Now many people accused him of lying and that he had just edited the video to show what he wanted. And they challenged him to film that pendulum for four hours uncut. Mitchell said he would do this for $150 Australian to cover fuel, ticket and his time. I paid him. After a short while, Mitch released a short video, 3 minutes 28 seconds long, showing the pendulum which is out of order. So as he hadn't contacted me to arrange an alternative filming date or location etc, I asked for my money back that he refused very rudely. I asked him again, which brings us up to date. Now requesting a refund for services not provided is a very simple and straightforward process. However, Mitch has felt the need to go legal. He met with his legal team in the local bar over a few stubbies. I have obtained some secret film of Mitch as he arrives and meets his legal team. Good day, Bruce. Oh, hello, Bruce. How are you, Bruce? Ben Crop, Bruce. Where's Bruce? It's not here, Bruce. Ah, good day, Bruce. Hello, Bruce. How are you, Bruce? Is your name not Bruce then? No, it's Mitchell. That's going to cause a little confusion. <laughs> so, for the time being, let's leave Mitch with his crack legal team as they formulate and construct a legal letter to me, Mr. Sensible, in purest legalese bullshit. Let's return to General McAuliffe. During December 1944, the commander of the 101st Airborne Division, Major General Maxwell D. Taylor, was back in the United States attending a staff conference. In his place, General McAuliffe, then Brigadier General, was the acting commander of the 101st. On the 22nd of December, he received a message from the German forces, the commander of whom was General Heinrich Freiherr von Ludwitz to the USA commander of the encircled town of Baston. The fortune of war is changing. This time the USA forces in and near Baston have been encircled by strong German armoured units. More German armoured units have crossed the river Erther near Ertherville and have taken Marche and reached Saint-Hubert by passing Hombre cibret tillet Librement is in German hands. There is only one possibility to save the encircled USA troops from total annihilation. That is the honourable surrender of the encircled town. In order to think it over, a term of two hours will be granted, beginning with the presentation of this note. If this proposal should be rejected, one German artillery corps and six heavy AA battalions are ready to annihilate the USA troops in and near Baston. The order for firing will be given immediately after this two hours term. All the serious civilian losses caused by this artillery fire would not correspond with the well-known American humanity, the German commander. More on General McAuliffe a little later. I received an email from Mitch saying, I suggest you get a lawyer. Attached to that email was a long letter written in purest legalese. I believe it was written by his crack team of lawyers from that top law company, Bruce, Bruce, Bruce and Bruce. I replied, we shall look at my reply as I go through all the points one at a time. Right. Mr. Bogan, also known as Bitch Made from Australia. Your letter dated 14th August 22. Mr. Bogan, I am writing to address your letter dated 14th August point by point as you have asked me to respond within 28 days. I am writing to query the above mentioned alleged debt and request further information from you regarding that debt. 
I know from the outset that I would be happy to settle any financial obligation you might lawfully owe as soon as I have received the following documentation from you. I have made no allegation of a debt. I have simply requested a refund of the monies paid for you to produce a four-hour video of a pendulum at Science Space as you did not meet the terms of your offer in our contract and are in breach. Validation of the alleged debt. I require you to provide me with a copy of the actual accounting that brought the subject account into being. No debt has been alleged. A refund has been requested as above. Verification of your claim against me. I require you to provide a sworn affidavit a sworn uh, after David or a hand signed invoice in accordance with the Bills of Exchange Act 1882 UK and the Bills of Exchange Act 1909 Australia, verifying your claim that I am indebted to that excellent YouTuber Mr Sensible in any way. You made an offer, a four hour video for $150 Australian to include petrol ticket and your time. I accepted and made payment and you acknowledged receipt and declared you would fulfil what you had promised. At this point contract was formed. A contract may be written and signed or it may be oral or formed otherwise and known as an implied contract. I have no need to invoice yourself as I am not claiming a debt against you. I have claimed that you did not meet the terms of the implied contract between ourselves and therefore have requested the return of the monies paid forthwith, to which you replied, until then go away. Number three, which shall be the number of the counting. Evidence of a mutually binding contract. I require you to provide me with copy of the contract signed by both parties and confirming that all elements of the contract have been fully disclosed. As above, a contract does not legally need to be a signed document and can be formed through other means and is then an implied contract. However, here is evidence of contract. And I show your first email when you ask for $150, your second email when you ask again, my acceptance email when I tell you I have paid $150 Australian and your acknowledgement when you acknowledge receipt of the money and promise to do the work. I then continue. Therefore, contract was formed. An offer was made by yourself. I accepted it and paid the specified amount, the consideration. All ingredients for contract were in place. Offer, acceptance, acknowledgement and consideration. You could have rejected my acceptance and returned payment but you instead confirmed you would do the work. I know you said donation, but donation wasn't specified in your offer, financing the work was. The payment link you provided was used in good faith. In addition to the above, I also required to answer the following very simple question in writing. Do you claim a debt against Mr Bitchmaid of Australia, also known as Bogan? I require you to provide me with a copy of the above-mentioned documents and respond to the question noted above within 28 days and provide with them a notice signed under full commercial liability and subject to the penalties of perjury, certifying that all of the replies and details given to the above are true and without deception, fraud or mischief or indeed anything else that's naughty. I have never claimed a debt against Mr Bitchmaid also known as Bogan from Australia. I claim breach of contract as the service offered, four hour uncut video footage of the Focal Pendulum at Space Science Museum and paid for in good faith was not provided. Instead, a short three minute, 28 second video was provided as the pendulum exhibit was closed as it was faulty with no offer of filming on another date, no offer of filming at another location and no attempted contact to me to try to negotiate any other solution. Therefore, a refund of monies paid for the agreed and promised service that was not provided has been requested. Please note that your failure refusal to provide the aforementioned documentation, yada yada yada, constitutes your agreement to the following. The debt didn't exist. The debt has already been paid. That you won't claim I have a debt to you anywhere. That you won't place adverse credit agency listings. You won't pursue this matter any further. The matter is now formally settled, finalised, closed, shut, finished, done. The above comments are moot. 
as no debt has been claimed, but a refund has been requested. It is on record and on YouTube that monies were paid for the offered services, that this was acknowledged by you and services were promised to be fulfilled by you. It is also on record that a four and a half video of the pendulum was not provided and that a refund was requested. No mention of a debt was made at any time. I take this opportunity to remind you that the legal maxims dictate that silence is deemed to be acquiescence. This concept was upheld in the case of Golden Eagle Insurance Company versus Fullboast Insurance in 1993. I'm responding to your letter and so am not silent. I do not acquiesce or agree to your requests, stipulations, demands in this letter, nor am I entering into any agreement in this response letter. And actually, Mitch, if I can take this opportunity just to add, I'm only surprised that you didn't manage to get something in here about the Misuse of Teaspoons Act of 1872. For the protection of all parties involved and as evidence of all dealings in respect of this matter, all conspire... Or all correspondences is it is to be in writing, and I do not give Mr. Sensible, or indeed anyone else who has a grip on reality, and or their agent signs permission to contact me by telephone, directly, indirectly, contact me regarding this matter by social media, such as, but not limited to, Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. Should I be contacted by phone or social media, I must warn you, that such contact could constitute harassment. And I may lodge a formal complaint with the Financial Ombudsman Service or the Credit and Investments Ombudsman as appropriate. Mitch, I don't think either of those are appropriate. As well as my telecommunications provider and or relevant social media platforms. Is. I can confirm I shall make no attempt to phone you. I don't even have a phone number anyway nor try to make contact with you via any social media. The only contact shall be in writing through our established email connection concerning this disagreement. I've already made clear, and you are aware, I have clearly requested a refund for breach of contact, so I have no need to do so again. Please note that I reserve the right and have full freedom to make videos on any subject I wish, as long as, to the best of my knowledge, I'm describing subjects and events in a factually accurate manner. This also includes videos about the contract that was formed with yourself about and include the filming of the Foucault Pendulum at Space Science Museum. I shall make no attempt to contact you nor encourage any others to do so. Furthermore, if any such video is made, like this one, about this situation in future by myself, I shall explicitly request that nobody attempts to contact you. And I do so now. Please, nobody contact Mitch. But Mitch, you're still making comments about me, aren't you? If you're going to comment about me, I have the right to reply. It's not harassment. You total gimboid. I look forward to receiving the documents and responses referred to herein within the next 28 days or by private settlement agreement, settling families and closing this matter. The contents of this letter is my full response to your letter. At this point, there is nothing further for myself to provide to you or respond to. Currently, this matter is not settled, finalised or closed. However, without prejudice, I suggest a reasonable settlement agreement to resolve this matter as follows. I'm a reasonable guy, so I thought I would make a reasonable settlement offer. Proposed agreement without prejudice. The initial offer was a four hour video of the pendulum provided by you in return for payment of 150, 50 for petrol, 50 for, 52 for ticket and 50 for your time, totaling 152 but discounting to 150. I question the amounts for fuel and ticket, but nevertheless, I agreed to the total figure of 150 and paid the requested monies using the payment method that you provided. Obviously fuel and ticket money has now been spent by yourself and you're unable to recoup those monies. But I also note that you haven't provided the four hour video of the pendulum as per your offer. Therefore, if it's agreed and you refund the $50 to me that as specified in your offer would have been for your time spent filming for four hours and then you retain the other 100 as specified in your offer covering fuel and tickets. We could then close this matter immediately. 
This will need to take place within 28 days of this letter. So there we go. I addressed each of the points in Mitch's legal letter and I made a very reasonable settlement uh, proposal. So I waited for my $50 and I was sure that it would be winging its way to me while he sat on the beach cracking a tinny and throwing another shrimp on the barbie. But obviously Mitch is not that bright and so he must have gone back to his law firm Bruce 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 and Bruce because shortly after I received another letter in which he basically reiterated all his same bogus claims again and totally ignored my proposal. Proposal. So therefore, I decided to do this, issue a PayPal chargeback. Now, I would have been quite happy if Mitch had just refunded that money, but he didn't. And so I described the entire situation, how I had paid for this service, this service was not delivered, and how he claimed it was a donation. It would appear that Mitch has been using his wife's PayPal and indeed misusing it by using donations when he's selling a service. I had a look today at Mitch's channel. I checked out his um, PayPal link and this is what I found. Now since this, his PayPal does seem to have returned again. It would appear that he's having to battle to save his wife's account. So I'm sure that things are all going swimmingly in the From Australia household. So having received this second email from him, I thought I'd better give him a response. And this is where the famous General McAuliffe comes in. Dear Mr. Fetid Dingo's Kidneys, I have already addressed all the points in your previous letter dated 14th of August and will not do so again. A full refund request has now been requested of PayPal. In response to your second letter dated 20th of August, where you repeat your demands and ignored my proposed compromise solution, now withdrawn, I would like to quote to you what US General Anthony Clement McAuliffe replied to German forces requesting his surrender in December 1944 near Bastogne, Belgium. Nuts! Love and kisses the YouTuber known as Mr Sensible. And you, sir, are a steely-eyed missile man. Shut up and sit down.